Welcome back again. So a tool in Blender that I use a lot is this face masking option, which you can activate by clicking that icon or using the M hotkey. And all it does is kind of what it says. It, you can just select faces and mask based on that selection. So I can only paint inside this selection. So if I switch to, say, a cool gray and flood fill this thing, you can see that it only fills that area, so it's really useful. Um, another thing before I forget is I need to turn occlude, coal, and normal off for the fill tool. And so I can just go through and make these selections and block in my color pretty quickly. So I'm going for a copper look there. Uh oh, this part I'm going to add a couple extra UV seams. This isn't going to change my UVs at all, but it will just make it a little bit easier to select. So I can hit L and select that part. I'm going to make it red. And the bottom, I'll make match this copper color. And I'm going to turn off the grid floor because it's pretty distracting. And I'll make those just match the blade, just to kind of tie it all together. And then whenever I'm using the fill tool, I always double check and make sure it actually filled everything, because sometimes it misses little pixels here and there. I'm not seeing any in this case, though, so I'm probably pretty good to go. Alright, so the next thing that I want to do is start blocking in some of the lighting. And I light when I'm doing models I light pretty simple as in I just have like a light source coming straight down from above I don't do anything really fancy with it so if I color pick that just go a little bit brighter I'll do the same thing with this edge piece here and I'm liking the colors on that so far. So this part will need to go darker. And I'll make these sides match that color. And let's see, the bottom will be the darkest. So that works pretty well. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, this is a little blurry. Um, I can disable mip maps and it'll make it a little bit sharper. It kind of reminds me of the old PlayStation 1 games, actually. But I just prefer to paint like that rather than with the mip maps on. Alright, so I can. Uh, Start blocking in this bottom piece as well, just by color picking. You have to be careful with color picking when you're using face selection because the A key will deselect and the S key is color pick, so it's easy to flip those and accidentally deselect when you mean to color pick. Alright, so that's not too bad of a block in. And I don't see any other spots that I can use the fill tool on, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to switch those options back on first of all, and then I'm going to switch to soft brush and start getting in these softer shadows. Let's see, so I'm going to start with the handle, I think. So just color pick it. Get a darker color, and I'm just going to put like a soft shadow underneath the handle, or the cross guard rather. So something like that, and then I'm going to continue a shadow down the side of this, just because of the these pieces out on the outside. Keeping fairly soft shadows. Just 
Just blending that in a little bit. Or trying to, anyway. Alright, and then there's going to be a an occlusion shadow down here at the bottom. And you can, you can bake these out, doing like an ambient occlusion bake. But I'm kind of lazy, I just paint them in. <laughs> All right, so that's the handle, at least the start of it. We'll do the um, bottom part here. I need that shadow to continue all the way down, so. Just brush that in. And to kind of round this out, I'm just gonna pull a highlight down here. There we go. Alright, so let's see what else. I can do cast shadows for the spikes. And they're going to have cast shadows as well as occlusion shadows around them. So cast shadow going down and then just around them. Kind of hint at a little bit of shadow. It'll just kind of ground them onto the, uh, onto the handle. Okay, so that's working. Just kind of touching up the shadows a little bit. Not really necessary, but... Alright, so I can go ahead and add some shadows to these. And I think the first and last one are these two which need to be in shadow entirely. Yeah, like that. And then these other ones, the underside will be in shadow because light's hitting them. And then I will, um, I'll add a little bit of extra shadowing to these just to kind of pop them a little bit. There we go. You can kind of see how that's feeling like there's some cast shadows or something going on there. Let's see. So another thing that I had on the drawing is grooves on the on this bottom part, just like lines going straight through it. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. They're going to be pretty thin, like maybe 3 pixels. Yeah, that'll look like it'll work. And I'm going to use the line option, which you can do with the E key, or you can go over here to stroke and just select it. And unfortunately, this doesn't have a constraint to it, so you have to kind of eyeball it to actually get it straight. There we go. Alright, so I need to add some highlights just to pull out these edges so it looks like an indention, not just a line painted on there. Alright, and... I think for the handle, I think I'm going to add some, I don't know what you'd call them, grips or something. Just some of these bronze pieces, just to break that up. I was going to do it like a wrapped cloth, but I think this will be a little bit more interesting. So, same thing. Switch to the hard brush, make sure it's the line. Um, let's try 8 pixels, maybe. I think that'll work.
Okay, and I need to do highlights. Let me change this back to space so I don't forget. So I'm just going to add some highlights and kind of pull these little pieces out a little bit. I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the overspray that I had. Okay, and I need to do a shadow underneath these. Alright, so that's working. Um, the sides, I guess, need to go into shadow too, don't they? Um, but this is kind of all painting is, though, is trying to figure out the lighting. Okay, that's working pretty well. I think I'm going to lighten this bottom part. It's looking a little too dark to me. Uh, let's see, I'll color pick that color. Just a touch darker. Okay, that's better. Um, let's see, what am I forgetting? See, down in this bottom part, I could add an occlusion shadow. So let's take this color, go a little bit darker. Go to back to my soft, and then just right around the edge slightly indicate that it's a little bit darker there. Okay, that's better. Um, I guess I'll start moving up the model. So I'll do a soft cast shadow underneath this. I don't really like the way I UV'd that. I think it'll be okay though. Uh, let's see, these top parts, they need a highlight on these on these edges right along here. That would catch a lot of light. And we'll go onto the blade. Let's see, color pick. Oh, this happens sometimes where on low poly stuff, if you paint something, sometimes it won't take all your brush strokes. If you've ever painted on like a, like a, a plane or whatever, you've probably run into that. Um, a workaround for it is just to throw a subsurf modifier and set it to simple and then crank it up a few times. I think it's just when you're doing low poly stuff, Blender doesn't have enough geometry to calculate the projection. That's what I think's going on anyway, but I don't know. But this usually fixes it, just throwing a subsurf on it. Okay, so that's the start of the shadows. I think for the center part, I think I'm going to try to shade it so it looks a little bit indented. So 
the geometry on it's technically flat, but we'll see if this works. Okay, so I think that's all right. I could probably lighten it just a little bit because it would be receiving some highlights. All right, let's see. So the other thing that I want to add is highlights to the sharp edges on this. Just to kind of, so you can see them. There we go. And I'm just going to go along all of the sharp edges on this thing to pull all of them out. Let's see, I think this is the last one, um, but another issue is the sides, you can't see those, so um, I'm going to go along those as well, so you can see what I mean down, down here. And some of these are actually in shadow, so I'll need to go in and dial them back a little bit. So like like these edges down here. So I'm just going to color pick the shadow color and then just lightly go over these and just... I still want them to be highlights, but just less bright than these ones. So something like that. And do the same thing up here. You always got to pay attention to your lighting. Okay, so that works. Let's see, I can do a do an occlusion highlight or uh, occlusion shadow rather down here. Okay, let's see. Um, I think on these sides, on the underside, I can just brighten these up just a little bit. Because I want this to look like it's curving, if that makes sense. Okay, that works. And right around the top of the blade, I can darken that. Another occlusion shadow. And we will darken this as well. OK, 
Okay. There we go. All right, so is there anything else I want to add to this? Uh, the bottom of this, maybe? Just kind of round it out a little bit. And I think that's pretty good. Pretty good for a stopping point, anyway. One other thing that I wanted to mention in this video that I forgot in the original recording is that when you save your textures, or to save your textures rather, you need to go down here to the menu in the UV image editor and do it that way. Uh, just saving your blend file won't, won't do it. Um, in fact, a lot of people run into that problem where they save their blend file thinking that their textures are being saved only to open it later and be horrified that they just have a black texture in here again. Um, so you don't want to run into that. So just make sure you either go down here to the menu and manually save it out, or you can hover over it and hit Alt-S. That's usually what I do. Um, alternatively, if you're over here in the texture paint mode in the 3D view, you can use this Save All Images. The only uh, tricky part with that is you need to have saved it out at least once. That way Blender knows where the path is that, that you want to save it to. Um, but otherwise you can just keep clicking that and it'll, it'll iterate through all the textures that you have and save all of them. And that's available in here as well, um, right there, but it didn't have a hotkey. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to add that one in there so you don't accidentally lose your work. And um, next up, we'll be detailing out this blade, so I hope to see you there.